Hello, and welcome back to the Crime Reel. For this week's true crime narration, we shall be looking at the case of Benjamin and Erica Seifert, a married couple from the United States. Benjamin Seifert was born on the 21st of October 1977 in Esterville, Iowa, to Elizabeth and Craig Seifert. In high school, he swam competitively and trained as a lifeguard and... After graduation, he joined the Navy and entered the SEAL training program. Benjamin was one of the fastest and strongest in the program and he was often top of the class during the training. However, he also had a quick temper and was known to provoke people for seemingly no reason. In 1999, Benjamin met his future wife, Erica Grace. He met her through some mutual friends during a night out at a bar. Erica was a few months younger than Benjamin, having been born on the 3rd of February 1978 in Roaring Springs, Pennsylvania. She was the only child of Charlotte and Gerald Grace. The family were quite well off and Erica spent a lot of her time practicing basketball. She was an honour student at the Mary Washington College and represented the college on their basketball team. She was known to be a hard-working and respectful player. She then went on to earn a bachelor's degree in history and political science. Benjamin and Erica had a whirlwind romance and after just a few weeks of dating, they eloped and got married in the Silver Bell Wedding Chapel in Las Vegas. It has been reported that this was very out of character for Erica and the young couple did not tell their parents of their marriage until some time later. Although disappointed that she had got married in this way, Charlotte and Gerald Grace were keen to help their daughter and new son-in-law. So they helped the couple set up a scrapbook store in Altoona, Pennsylvania. At around the same time, Benjamin started to become increasingly withdrawn from his own family and he was also dishonourably discharged from the Navy for insubordination, poor performance and absenteeism. Whilst on the outside, they seemed like a young, happy, fun-loving couple. In truth, Benjamin and Erica brought out the absolute worst in each other. The behaviour of both Benjamin and Erica changed after their marriage. Alongside their scrapbook store, they set up an eBay shop selling various promotional and souvenir items which they acquired by breaking into restaurants. They both developed an obsession with merchandise from the restaurant chain Hooters. Benjamin had a tattoo of a swastika on his chest and before long Erica had a tattoo of a cross on her hip. This was inspired by the movie Natural Born Killers. Benjamin owned several guns and bought Erica a 357 Magnum as a gift. They also owned several pet snakes who they named Bonnie and Clyde, Hitler and HIV. According to reports, he was a hot-headed, racist, bigoted control freak while she was a codependent control freak with jealousy issues. Erica and possibly Benjamin became addicted to prescription drugs and alongside this the pair began regularly taking illegal drugs together with copious amounts of alcohol. They always seemed to be chasing the next and bigger high. Erica and Benjamin took a trip together to Ocean City, Maryland for Memorial Day weekend in 2002. They rented a three-bedroom, two-floor penthouse at an oceanfront complex that was called the Rainbow. Ocean City is a major beach resort on the east coast of the United States, whose population swells from around 7,000 in the off-season to over 300,000 during the summer weekends. On Saturday, May the 25th, 2002, Erica and Benjamin, who were both 24 at the time, had plans to go out and party. They decided to travel using the Ocean City Transit Bus, which provides an easy way to access the bars and clubs along the coastal highway. When they tried to board the bus, the driver told them that they needed the exact fare, but the couple did not have any change. A fellow passenger, 
Joshua Ford, who was with his girlfriend, Martha Crutchley, paid the fare for them and the four soon got chatting. 32-year-old Joshua and Martha, who was 51, were staying at the Atlantis condominiums for Memorial Day weekend. Joshua and Martha had met at a Christmas party in 1999 and had recently moved into a house together in Fairfax, Virginia. The two couples soon discovered that they were both headed to the same place, Secrets Nightclub. As both couples were going there, they decided to spend the evening partying together. At the end of the night, they went back to Erica and Benjamin's condo to continue partying. The following day, Benjamin and Erica went to play mini-golf and continued with their vacation. They were due to return home on Friday the 31st of May, but before they left, decided to break into the now shut-down Hooters restaurant at 12207 Coastal Highway. In the early hours of that morning, they triggered a silent alarm at the restaurant. As the police pulled up, they caught Erica and Benjamin in possession of about $5,500 worth of t-shirts and other Hooters memorabilia. Erica was carrying both a knife and a 357 Magnum, whilst Benjamin also had a knife along with a 9mm handgun. A further search of their Jeep Cherokee uncovered handcuffs, gloves, masks and more guns. During the arrest, Erica became increasingly panicked and informed the arresting officer that she needed her anti-anxiety medication, which was in her handbag. When the police officer opened her bag to retrieve the medication, they found five spent rounds, along with Joshua and Martha's driver's licenses. Joshua and Martha had been reported missing two days earlier after they had failed to return to work after their weekend break. Initially believing that they were responding to a break-in, the police soon realised that they had come across something far more sinister. Erica and Benjamin were taken into custody and the police went to search the couple's condo in the hope that they may find Joshua and Martha. At the condo, the police found multiple pictures from Erica and Benjamin's holiday, some of which included Joshua and Martha. A key to an apartment in the Atlantis condominium where Joshua and Martha had been staying was also found. The officers also noticed that the bathroom door appeared to be brand new and upon searching the bathroom, they discovered a bullet hole in the wall along with remnants of human tissue, blood and hair. During the police interview, Erica told them that Joshua and Martha had been murdered by her husband. She claimed that she was being abused and that Benjamin had made her go along with his crimes. Erica said that Benjamin had forced the couple to strip and then, as they cowered in the bathroom, he shot Benjamin before stabbing Martha to death. Erica then said that Benjamin had dismembered the bodies before the two of them packed the body parts in rubbish bags and disposed of the bags in various rubbish bins in the Delaware area. However, Benjamin claimed that after a night of drinking, he had slept in his Jeep. When he returned to the condo, he was shocked to find that his wife had murdered two people. He admitted that he had helped her dismember and dispose of the bodies, but that he was in no way responsible for Joshua and Martha's deaths. Erica provided the authorities with details of where the bodies had been discarded, which subsequently led to an extensive search of a nearby landfill site. On the 3rd of June 2002, parts of both Joshua and Martha's bodies were located. It was established that Joshua had been shot the bullets were a match to Erica's 357 Magnum. However, only part of Martha's body was found, so it was impossible to identify her cause of death. Both Benjamin and Erica were charged with first-degree murder. In June 2002, it was reported by their respective lawyers that both Erica and Benjamin would be pleading not guilty to the charges brought against them. As the investigation continued, the police pieced together what they believed had happened that night. 
After Joshua and Martha return to Benjamin and Erica's condo, it is believed that Erica falsely accused them of stealing her handbag, at which point Benjamin pulled a gun on the couple. As Joshua and Martha hid in the bathroom, Erica and Benjamin killed them together, although it could not be established who had actually inflicted the fatal wounds. After this, they both dismembered and disposed of the bodies. Later that day, they continued with their holiday, including playing a game of mini-golf. The prosecutors believed that there was no motive for the killing beyond Erica and Benjamin seeking the so-called thrill of it. The couple had visited a Home Depot on US 50 in the days following the murder to purchase paint and a new door to repair the crime scene. After this, Erica was known to have pulled a gun and threatened a nightclub employee who had challenged Benjamin when he was tampering with an ATM. It was also reported that in the time between the murders and the arrest, Erica got a tattoo of a snake in the same location as the first stab wound which had been inflicted upon Martha. The police also discovered that in photographs taken after the murder, Erica can be seen wearing a ring on a chain around her neck. This ring belonged to Joshua and was reportedly still caked in his blood when she was wearing it. A 22-year-old woman by the name of Melissa Selling came forward and informed the police that she and her boyfriend, Justin, had met with Erica and Benjamin a couple of days after the murders. After spending the evening partying, Erica and Benjamin had invited them back to their condo. Once there, Erica accused them of taking her purse and Benjamin pulled a gun on them. However, for unknown reasons... Perhaps Erica and Benjamin's reluctance and lack of time to clear up another crime scene, the situation calmed down and Melissa and Justin left safely. Melissa agreed to testify at the trials. After various delays regarding the admissibility of evidence and a move of location due to the enormous publicity surrounding the case, Benjamin's trial began in Rockville, Maryland on the 31st of March 2003, whilst Erica's trial began on the 2nd of June 2003 in Frederick, Maryland. The prosecution, in agreement with Joshua and Martha's families, had agreed not to seek the death penalty. The families felt that this was too humane and not enough punishment for what Benjamin and Erica had done to their loved ones. Benjamin's trial lasted 10 days, with over 40 witnesses being called, including Melissa. The defence argued that it was Erica who was responsible, even referring to her as Crazy Erica, and painted her as a possessive, Xanax-snorting, gun-toting control freak, and that Benjamin's only crime was to help her dispose of the bodies. After jury deliberations of around 10 hours, the seven women and five men of the jury found Benjamin not guilty of Joshua's murder. It is believed that as the prosecution could not definitively identify the shooter, and because the bullets had been fired from Erica's gun, this may have led to his acquittal. Benjamin was, however, found guilty of the second-degree murder and first-degree assault of Martha. The only charge for which he was found guilty of in regard to Joshua's murder was accessory after the fact. Joshua and Martha's families were shocked and disgusted with this verdict. Erica's trial followed in June 2003 and lasted seven days. Similar to Benjamin's trial, Her defence tried to lay all of the blame on her husband. They claimed that Erica was psychologically fragile and was constantly manipulated by her husband as she so desperately craved his affection. The defence stated that he physically and mentally abused her and that she was completely under his control. Contrary to these claims, many of Erica's earlier police statements proved that she was not afraid to stand up to her husband. The jury deliberated for just four hours before returning their verdict. Erica was found guilty of the first degree murder of Joshua and the second degree murder of Martha. On the 7th of July 2003, Benjamin received the maximum sentence for his crimes, 38 years in prison. 
At sentencing, a visibly angry judge stated that he didn't believe Benjamin's version of events, labelling it a thrill killing. Benjamin showed no emotion and did not make a statement. Shortly after, Erica was sentenced to life in prison plus 20 years. At the sentencing hearing, she spoke to give a rambling, tearful apology to the families of the victims. Seven years later, in March 2010, Benjamin filed for divorce. This was granted in August 2010. Both Erica and Benjamin exhausted all of their appeals and are currently in prison in Maryland Correctional Institution for Women and Roxbury Correctional Institution, respectively. Benjamin will be eligible for parole this year. Erica will be eligible for parole in 2024. Many of those involved in the case have described it as one of the most shocking that they have ever seen and are completely against either one of them being released on parole. One has gone so far as to state that they will turn up with the autopsy photographs at every parole hearing in an attempt to ensure that they both serve their full sentences. Just one other part of the story that I believe is worth mentioning. In August 2002, it was reported that Benjamin and Erica were being considered as suspects in a Pennsylvania case where Dana Gates was murdered and her fiancé, Lauren Burkett, was seriously assaulted. The police were able to ascertain that they were all in the same bar on the night before their murder. But it was later reported that Dana's ex-boyfriend had been arrested and determined that Benjamin and Erica had no link to this crime. The case against the ex-boyfriend was later dismissed due to lack of evidence and the case remains unsolved. Thanks very much for listening to that story. Please add any comments down below about the case. Thanks very much for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. There's a book called Cruel Death, which was written by a crime writer, M. William Phelps, that really goes into the detail to explain what happened in this case. Rest in peace, Joshua and Martha.